You might not know it, but there are dozens of materials that you can use with your laser cutter. In this video, I'll show you the top 10 that I use on a regular basis, so stick around. Hi, I'm Steve, and I make everything. This is the first of a two-part set of videos in which I want to cover some of the materials that I use on a regular basis. We'll start with five in this video which are really basic and anybody who's beginning is probably going to find little trouble getting going with some of these. And in the second video we'll cover some of the more advanced materials that you might want to try in the future. So let's get going. So the first material on our list is wood. And you're going to use wood a lot. It's, it's cheap, it's easy, uh, there's a wide variety of materials uh, you can use starting from hardwood or softwood, you know, pine or oak or maple or whatever. And you can also use composites like, like plywood or even laminate. I've tried, I've used some laminate material as well. Uh, the settings, the window for success with, with wood is generally pretty big, so you know you can get away with some questionable settings sometimes and still manage to get a, a print out of your laser. Um, and even if you don't, the advantage of wood is, it's, with the exception of maybe some of the hardwoods, is it's generally pretty cheap. So if you do make a mistake and you have to re recut, relaser something, it's not really that big a deal. Uh, you'll eventually learn and you will make fewer mistakes as you go. So let's take a look at some of the things we can do with wood. So here's a selection of a few things that I've done with wood, uh, starting from, you know, basic name signs, uh, coasters, you can etch uh, quite nicely into this is Baltic birch. Uh, I did a, I took an image of the moon and, and uh, etched that into, a, or engraved that into a uh, piece of Baltic birch as well. You can find online uh, sites that will let you design a box and you can type in your dimensions whether or not it has a lid and it will print something out and, and I created a wooden box. Uh, I also created a number of, of uh, wood samples that I use for reference um, when, I'm, when I'm working with the material. So Baltic birch or, or uh, fiberboard and this is an oak laminate. Uh, down in the back. So you can do some really cool things. Um, I don't have any pine, so I didn't bother to print a pine sample, but pine works really well as well. Uh, now with wood, you do want to mask it off, uh, either with, you know, painter's tape, or you can buy uh, proper 12-inch wide masking, rolls of masking that you can just cover it with when you, when you put it into your laser so it doesn't burn, because otherwise you'd get kind of flaming on the sides. You can see in the case of the the moon, well hopefully you can see that along this edge there's a bit of a kind of smoke trail here because when I when I did this one I didn't mask it off. It's much harder to mask for an image but normally an image isn't quite this dark so um, but you know so mask when you when you can and you'll you'll print fine. These are like great output from from my laser. So the second material we want to talk about is acrylic. And acrylic or plastic, it, it, it's fairly common. It's used in a lot of places. You can, it's easy to buy. You can get it at your local hardware store or any specialty uh, plastics place. Um, now, again, like wood, there's a lot of latitude in the setting, so you don't have to be super precise and you'll still get... Uh, you know, a, a viable uh, piece out of out of your efforts. The there are a couple of challenges though. So first of all, it, it, if you looked at the gradient uh, palette that I did in the last video, you'll notice that there isn't a lot of gradient difference between say 10% power and 95% power and gradients in plastics don't really work all that well. You can kind of get some th something, but it's not as precise, say, as wood or leather or some other material. So, yeah, you don't expect greatness out of, out of acrylic from, from, say, the image perspective. You can do it, but it won't be fantastic. The other thing about acrylic is there are two forms. There's cast, which is tends to be a little more expensive, but it, it laser cuts and engraves really well. Um, and there's also rolled or extruded acrylic. And that, uh, the, 
Extruded acrylic is the, typically the kind you would get if you went to your local hardware store and just pulled some off the shelf. Almost always that's going to be uh, rolled acrylic or extruded, same thing. Uh, and the reason for that is it's a little bit cheaper and price matters when you're at, at a store. So they tend to stock the cheapest thing they can get. Now, that in itself isn't such a big deal. There are differences in the actual plastic though. So when you're laser cutting um, rolled acrylic, for example, it tends to smoke a little bit more. So you'll get a, there is a tendency for acrylic to haze around the edges, especially where you have a lot of power and, and this smoke gets generated. And that happens to a lesser degree with cast. Uh, you can kind of fix that in either kind of plastic though, if you use, uh, you know, just spread a thin coat of, uh, of dish soap on it before you cut it. Uh, that keeps that, that smoke and it keeps the hazing from happening. The hazing, by the way, is like a modification to the plastic. So once it's there, it's nearly impossible to get rid of. You can't just wipe it off. So you really want to take some steps when you're, when you're working with acrylic that, uh, like, wood you mask it acrylic you can effectively mask it with something like dish soap to to work on it anyway let's take a look at a couple of examples of acrylic so here we have a selection of things that i've made with acrylic uh, starting from a basic material template i make one of these for most of my materials i work with uh, you saw it for wood you'll see it again for for some of the others uh, my gradient uh, calibration tool, which uh, I talked about in the last video. Uh, I make one of those for, for pretty much every material as well. Uh, Keychains are a popular item for acrylic. Uh, it's pretty durable, so and it's very easy to work with, so you can make keychains. And finally, in the previous video, we saw the, the edge lit sign and uh, it's perfect for that kind of thing. You can also use it for you know, things like boxes, like, like the car, like the uh, wooden box I showed you earlier, you can make something similar with acrylic as well. So, uh, it's, it's strong, it's cheap, relatively so not as cheap as wood, but you know, it's a little more, it's, it's cheaper than some other materials. So, uh, and it's, it is easy to work with. So, so there you have acrylic. So number three on our list of materials you should be using is paper. And it comes in a few forms, certainly cardstock or even plain paper, uh, cardboard, uh, you know, any form of anything that originates from a tree, basically, that isn't wood is the kind of thing you're, we're talking about here. Now, it may seem a little weird to be hitting uh, a piece of paper with what is effectively a high density blowtorch, but it actually works. If your settings are right, you'll have no trouble cutting and cutting paper. You can even do engraving. If you have something like cardstock, which is a little heavier paper, uh, you can you can get a grayscale out of it. And so we're getting we're moving to things that are a little more difficult to work with. Paper certainly one of them. Uh, settings are, I'll say pretty sensitive. You can easily burn the edges of something. Uh, paper is not one of those things you can mask because when you pull the masking off, it'll probably mess up the paper. So you kind of have to cut it bare. And that means that you have to pay a lot of attention to the settings. So with that, we'll take a look at a couple of samples of what I've done with paper. Here's a sample of some things that I've done. Uh, of course, the my card pro profile cards for in this case, cardstock, which again is just slightly heavier than normal paper, uh, cardboard, and you can see it does quite a nice job. Uh, I did a gradient uh, template so I can see what it looks like at different powers. I Just for fun, I printed uh, the previous acrylic name tag. You would never use this for a, for a keychain, but you can see it actually does a decent job. Uh, and I printed just for fun, uh, an image of a horse, which came out quite nicely. Again, this is just basic paper, like there's nothing fancy here. You know, spend a little time to get the settings right and you'll get good results. Final piece here is in cardboard. Uh, this is a template, a jig that I created for doing engraving on 
cork coasters, I can just drop them in here and, and they're rep the placement is reproducible. So I, I use cardboard because sometimes those things will get destroyed and cardboard is free, basically. It comes in every time you get a box from, from Amazon or some other online place, you'll get a big, a, a big piece of you know, material you can use. So that's, that's what I tend to use for that sort of thing. So there we have paper. So at number four on our list of materials you should be using is cork. And when I say using in the case of cork, I mean try it because cork has its uses and uh, you don't, it's not going to be something you use every day. But if you want to print something like a coaster, uh, and I can show you some samples, it, it's perfect for that. Anywhere where you want to be able to, to put a hot pot, for example, onto something or a uh, in the case of a coaster where you have a glass that might be wet on the bottom and you don't want to leave a stain, cork is perfect for that. So if you're, you know, if you're into making coasters, then cork is your, cork is your game. So it, now there, there's a couple of things to remember with cork. It, the settings, because we're moving into the more difficult materials, the settings are a little tricky with cork. And you should also know that once the cork gets to more than an eighth of an inch or three or four millimeters thick, it will become exceedingly difficult to cut completely through with your laser. And that's because there isn't enough power in a 40 or 45 watt laser to cut all the way through in one pass. And that's because cork in part is an insulator, so it really holds the heat. And But you're cutting deep enough that you're getting below the focus, the focal length of, the, of most laser lenses. So y y there just isn't enough energy to cut through the cork. So y you end up either cutting it by hand or, you know, just working with thinner cork or buying pre-cut cork. You can also do that. So uh, keep that in mind. And when you do cut it, just so you know, cork smokes really badly. And you'll, if you try and cut it with any amount of power, you'll end up with like black smoke all over everything. So it can help to mask the cork off when you're, when you're cutting it, even so assuming you're using eighth inch where you can actually cut through it in one swath, mask it off just like you would with, with plywood uh, and it'll keep that smoke down. Now, the th other kind of point on that front is when if you do successfully cut through the cork, always the edges are, are very uh, sooty. So be careful when you handle it because you'll end up putting black marks all over your work and uh, masking will help with that too because then you'll have something to hold. Uh, the first thing you should do is, is clean the edges. Uh, I typically rub them a bit with a piece of paper towel or, well, or microfiber cloth and uh, that helps keep some of that down. So uh, anyway, Let's take a look at a couple of samples. Cork has definitely some limited uses, but what you'll find is where it is useful, it's kind of, you know, almost critical to have. So uh, I'll start with, uh, again, my sample, uh, just a sample swatch. Uh, and a couple of things I've done in the past here uh, are coasters. Again, uh, it, cork, especially once, once it gets more than a few millimeters thick, is actually really hard to cut. Uh, you'll see on, on the edge of this one where I cut sort of 90% of the way through before the laser uh, basically got to the point where it was defocused and it couldn't cut anymore. Uh, so you can't, you have to be careful trying to cut it. Uh, I ended up cutting the rest of this one with a, with a utility knife, but uh, again, you know, number of coasters. These are all just engraved images on top of uh, a standard cork that I bought at uh, on Amazon, and I can put a link in the description below uh, for where to buy the samples. So there we have cork. So the fifth and final material we're going to talk about in the basic set is leather. And yeah, believe it or not, leather is a basic material for lasers. I don't use it a lot myself, but it does get used by a lot of people, so you should really know that you can use it with your laser and you know you can see some of the things that get done with it. A couple of cautions though, first of all leather smokes really badly when you cut it so mask it off and I would suggest you not use like 
blue painter's tape. It's very sticky and it's really hard to get off of leather. It really sticks to leather. So use the more traditional masking paper that you can buy online. Uh, it comes in 12 inch sheets and that stuff is much easier to work with. The other caution with leather is it smells really bad when you cut it. So uh, the best description is like burning hair except worse. <laughs> so uh, you know Make sure your laser is ventilated well when you're cutting it. And I'd suggest after your job is finished, let your laser run for the, let the fan run for a minute or two to get rid of any of that residue smoke. Because if you open the cover when there's smoke in there and it all rolls out into your room, it's a sickening smell. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, with that, we can look at a couple of samples that I created. And again, remember, I don't use leather as a regular, uh, as a regular practice, but it, it is interesting to work with. So uh, take a look at these. And we come to, to leather in our, in our set of basic materials. Le leather, it is pretty easy to cut, and you can see from the swatch, you, you can get a really nice job done. Uh, keychains, it's good for keychains, and of course, I printed my gradient swatch as well. And you know, if you were making wallets or backpacks, like I have people make purses, uh, they use their laser to cut all the pieces and then stitch them together. Leather is perfect for that, so you know, I, I tend not to work with leather, leather very often except to maybe make the occasional keychain, but. Uh, you know, many people use it for, for a lot of interesting things. So uh, there you have it. So there we have our first five materials that we'll work with on our lasers on a regular basis. We'll call these the easy materials because the settings to get them up and running are pretty trivial. The latitude for error is pretty big. So even if you do make a mistake, you'll still get some, some useful uh, part out of it. Uh, and on, as a side benefit, if you don't, if you really screw it up somehow, uh, these materials tend to be pretty cheap, in some cases free, and uh, so there's an ample supply and it won't cost you a lot if you have to throw something away and start over. Now, the good news is I did create, a, in a previous video, I did create a material settings file that you can load into your laser, at least if you have a Muse 3D or I believe any other full spectrum laser. I'll put a link up here so you can go watch that video and pull that file down and, and load it in. That will get you a starting point. You will probably have to still tweak with some of the, some of the individual power settings in there, but at least you'll have a starting point. Now in the next video, we'll talk about five more advanced materials. And these are our materials where the settings are somewhat more tedious. Uh, the power, for example, is much more sensitive. And uh, you know, some might say these are impossible to work with, but I have a lot of fun with them. So you know, hopefully I can show you a few things and, and you, know, you at least attempt to work with them. With that, we'll close the video down. Hopefully you got some value out of it and at least you know, are inspired to try some of these materials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.